Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal Miko. Welcome to space. When you hear Soviet space shuttle, there's a good chance you'll immediately think of Buran. I know I do, it's quite well known in the space world for its one unpiloted test flight in 1988 and subsequent abandonment after the fall of the Soviet Union. But what you're looking at right now isn't Buran, it's another Soviet space shuttle that unfortunately never saw the light of day. This is LKS, Logki Kosmichiski Samolot, which means light space plane. That's a very apt name for it if you compare it to Buran and the US shuttle, it's about half of their size. LKS was an alternative to Buran in the design phase, proposed by Soviet engineer Vladimir Chelomi. Chelomi believed that LKS was a more sensible, sustainable, cost-effective alternative to Buran, which he quite accurately predicted could not be sustained. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about LKS was that Chalamet wanted to use a continuous heat shield to avoid using a tiled heat shield like the US space shuttle and the proposed Buran. And given the smaller size of LKS, that was certainly more plausible. Although whether they could have pulled it off remains a mystery of history. This would likely make LKS a much easier craft to maintain and the program more sustainable overall. Especially when you consider the launch vehicle, where Buran required the development of the massive Energia rocket that it would launch on the side of, LKS was proposed to launch on top of the already well established and proven Proton rocket. During launch on top of Proton, LKS shows off another pretty cool feature, in the form of folding wings. The launch goes as follows, the proton first stage firing, separation and ignition of the second stage, separation and ignition of the third stage, then finally separation of the LKS, and final orbital insertion being performed by the LKS's onboard engines. So what can it carry? Well despite its small size, LKS could still carry a reasonable payload of about 4 tons with a 30 cubic meter volume and in addition to 2 tons of fuel, providing about 300 meters per second of delta V. LKS featured a 16 cubic meter pressurized volume to support two cosmonauts for up to 10 days. Crucially, LKS had the main capability that was desired of space shuttle type vehicles, and that's an opening and closing payload bay. So you can take stuff up and take stuff back down. LKS could have fulfilled military missions and space station servicing and resupply missions, acting as a self-contained all-in-one space delivery tug, much like the role the US shuttle played in the ISS program, although at a physically smaller scale. LKS could have also acted as a self-contained civilian or military research platform, especially when you consider that without a crew, LKS could stay in orbit for up to a year. Upon returning to Earth, LKS could have landed on a normal runway, although its main landing gear would have been skids, with its nose gear being a wheel for steering. In the end, LKS lost to Buran. All resources were redirected to the development of Buran and Energia as the Soviets decided they wanted a quite literal full-sized response to the US shuttle. If you ask me, it sounds like pride got in the way of a potentially more sustainable program, which is rather unfortunate. Who knows, if LKS had flown and been sustainable enough to survive the fall of communism, it may very well have even replaced Soyuz as Russia's primary crew vehicle and be flying to the International Space Station today. I hope you've enjoyed this interesting spacecraft story, and if you did, be sure to check out the shuttle's payload bay for some more Simply Space content, and I'll catch you later.